Okay, we're here with my garbage pick tiller. Cleaning up the label, it's a Magna American Corporation. I guess they used to make really neat tillers, big full-size models, and this is probably one of their crappier small front tine units here. Um, I did look up the engine, it's a Briggs & Stratton, it's a 9 cubic inch displacement. Uh, three and a half horse, five horse, not too sure yet. I'll look up the numbers, I'll do some more research, I'll figure out what it is, hopefully get some nice pictures of it. Um, not quite too sure of the date code yet, just because I've forgotten and haven't looked it up on the website or any of my other Briggs and Stratton engines. Maybe I can uh, uh, do that before this video is over. But anyway, pulled the oil cap off, and it does have some oil in it, and it looks okay clean, but that doesn't matter. I want it out of there. I can't find an oil drain. I'm sure there's one on the bottom of the engine, which is attached to the tiller there, so I'm just going to heave her on on the side and dump it in this bucket over here. Okay, change the oil. Spilt it all over the floor, of course, but I got some fresh 30 weight in there now, and it's overfilled, just because hopefully there's scum in there I can get out. Next is the plug. Uh, now that I can turn it over, hopefully without hurting anything, this thing is rusty. And I gotta do ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. And let's see if it wants to come out nicely. Ugh. It's not too bad. This blockhead's probably aluminum anyway, so it's not going to have too much to give. And I have replacement used plugs that I have no doubt will be ten times better than what this one looks like, just given the rust factor. Does that blow by? Yeah, that's... It's okay, but... Auto light. I don't put forward crap in my equipment. We'll put a nice champion plug in there and be happy. Okay, I got my uh, brand new... I say brand new. We usually change the spark plugs on the regular equipment once a year or so. And so it's a used, but it's 10 times better than the other one. Champion, it's a J19 LM, which is a typical flathead Briggs & Stratton motor plug. And I'm not going to thread it in yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it up to my spark lead here, and I'm going to rest it against the block somehow, hopefully on some bare metal. And I'm going to pull it and see if I can get some sort of spark out of this. And hopefully if it does, then that saves us a ton of labor. If not, then... Uh, not so much. And I bet you I can zoom my camera in. That's where the plug wants to live. I'll zoom it right in on that. Hey, it took focus. How about that? If I don't move this thing around too much, pulling it. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn it on in case it does have some sort of spark killing feature on the throttle. And let's see if we get anything. Probably why they gave it away. If it didn't have spark or wouldn't run. Wow. Jeez. This thing turns over hard. Hey, it does spark. How about that? So we do have spark, so that's 10 things we don't have to look at now. Maybe you saw it in the video, maybe you didn't. So now I'm going to throw that plug in there and we're going to suck the gas out of that tank because I smelled it and it is old. Okay, next up is the gas. It's already leaked out a little bit thanks to me changing the oil. It's uh, By tilting it over on its side, it leaked out a little bit. That's how I knew that this thing smells. Yeah, yeah, we're not good here. So uh, you can get these chicken basters or turkey basters or whatever at the dollar store for obviously a dollar. They're wonderful for, you know, like getting power steering fluid out of cars or brake fluid out of a reservoir, anything like that. Or in this case here, getting this horrible stale gas out of a horrible, actually it's an aluminum tank, so there's probably not going to be any, yikes, is that an amber? Uh, no corrosion in here, but let's suck this thing dry and then I'll load it up with fresh gas and a lot of sea foam because we're going to see if we can hopefully get this thing cleaned out on its own without having to take it off uh, the motor. Okay, that's as low as I can get that tank, and it's pretty much sucked out dry. There's just a little bit left in there. That's good enough for me. What I'm going to do now is throw some sea foam in there, and then throw uh, maybe a quarter tank of gas, and then mix that a little bit around, and then we're... Ugh. Let me yank on it quite a bit, see if I can get anything out of it. Uh, sea foam is uh, a snake oil, essentially, but it works really well. It's a motor treatment. You can get it at a variety of places. Uh, here in New England, you get it at VIP, but parts of America, 
typical O'Reilly's, I guess you could get uh, sea foam like this. Um, it does everything. It's a cleaner, it's a de-icer, anti-gel, upper uh, engine lubricant. Uh, you can put it in the oil, put it in the fuel, put it in the intake, you can put it everywhere. It's essentially just like I would imagine it's, it's a soap. Um, and it also dries gas. So in our situation here, I'm just going to, for small equipment, just giving whatever a shot of this is plenty because this will treat like 20 gallons. You know, I think a third of the container does 20 gallons of fuel. So, you know, in the springtime, just give your equipment a shot of this. Works out great. Hey, how about that? Oh, I know, it's one of those auto choke what have yous. Okay, well, that means it will start at some point. Boy, that governor is stiff. So who knows how well it will run, but it will run and it is a, bul a pulse jet carburetor. All right, for the purposes of th this video, I'll flip her around so you can see the exhaust. So if we get any good exhaust action and flames and stuff, you guys can enjoy it. The carburetor mechanism is, uh, you know, there's a rat's nest in here. I can tell because the governor is real lethargic. It doesn't really want to move at all. I did put some oil on this thing, so the carburetor, the throttle anyway, does work, but it won't work on its own. Oh, well, I'll have to mess with it a little bit. That's no biggie. All I want is a putt. I don't want it to run. I just want it to kind of go. And boy, this is going to suck. Because it's going to be pointed right at... Well, anyway. Let's see how we can... Uh, see if we can get anything out of it. Let's just go with that. Try not to cut my fingers off. That's nice. Hey, 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 that's what I want to hear. Boy, that's choked to death. Okay, taking, uh, we've got three screws holding on the cover here, and I've disconnected the whatever mechanism that is. Um, this thing should pop right off. Hey, no rat's nest. Well, there's crap there on the head, but... Huh. Plastic. Well, the speed control, which is right here, stop, slow, fast. That stop, that's fast. There's nothing more than just a, a lever that pulls on the throttle there. So the ratchet is right here. Okay, that's neat. Uh, <laughs> the uh, governor speed control is fast and you can see maybe you can maybe you can't yeah it's messing with the throttle here so start try two um, here's the problem why it flooded this vacuum actuated carburetor uh, choke mechanism only it's choked unless it's running well if it kinda runs then you're hosed because it floods itself uh, this whole mechanism is free and clear now there's nothing obscuring anything so we can set it to mid throttle and sure enough whoops it should go. Yeah, it does. Kind of. Almost. It will when the governor gets into play. Uh, but what I've done is I've taken this screwdriver here and propped the choke open. So now hopefully I'm not going to flood. Let's see if I can catch my pants on fire with flames out of the exhaust.